across the world wide web on your mobile devices on social media platforms this is jambo radio www.jamboradio.co.uk we are multilingual we are conversational in the languages you best understand we are jambo radio jambo radio inspiring transformation good afternoon beautiful people good afternoon amazing people uh, my name is Dimitri Shoreke, and this is 3,000 Miles again. I'm here with my colleague, my host from day one. We've been kicking it from day one. Kewe, it's a big shout out to you. Hello, how are, how are you doing, beautiful people, today? How's everything? How's, how's Glasgow today? How's the UK? Um, I, I want to apologize for not coming on air last week. We had some technical issues, so that's all we're not back on air. But we're back this week, and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be an explosive topic. Honestly, just get ready. The only thing I can tell you is get ready to be blown away. That's just all I can say. That's just all I can say because yes. Before uh, we delve into the topic, I can see you're flashing your jumbo your jumbo hat. I was supposed to wear mine. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, to go to this conversation, I need to hide under this umbrella so i need to just wait so i don't have your umbrella <laughs> there, there wouldn't be it was you know because today's topic is more like an ongoing issue we have to touch some sensitive things both yeah. intellectually and there's no way we are going to shy out of it because we are affected people and once conversations have been hoped to in this level we need to talk um, but we are not going to come from the approach of the emotional kind of conversation. We want to have actually divulge it from the intellectual perspective yeah. and so that we would know what is actually going on, antecedents and, you know, way out if possible. But first, we want to say a big shout out to everybody and uh, hope everyone is keeping safe in the UK. Uh, what we've experienced so far is um, something I feel should not be condoned in any society, regardless of the society either in European society or, um, um, you know, that is where we're going to drive our points home today. Today's topic is the people, the economy, and the state of the government. And hopefully we are going to make this a kind of globalization, you know, ideology. We're going to have a you know, world view of what is going on because um, we can see lots of unrest going on. So, yeah, who are those people who actually engage in this unrest? We have the people, which is the topic we have. At hand. And people are actually also reacting to some changes that is the economy and the government of course everybody is pointing us to the government the yeah, argument of the far right coming from nigeria also south sudan um right. america everywhere it's actually everybody's everywhere pointing so so by, so, by what we foundation so so by what we foundation i'm just going to give a background so the listeners understand okay. background story a few weeks ago there was protest in Nigeria. There was protest in Nigeria about the end bad governor's protest. It was publicized. It was talked about. And on the 1st of August, the protest kicked off. About same time, the protest sprang up in Bangladesh. Against the government and everything and serious backlash element of violence because i was really the one as at the time where the citizens were able to gain access to the like the the seat of power the prime minister's home and everything 300 lives has been lost hmm. in that backdrop thursday i think the 20 was the last week of July, I think 2028 or so, I can't, I can't pinpoint the date. There was a stabbing in Southport. Three children were killed and a couple others were injured and everything. Stabbed in a dance school and everything. The weekend preceding that event, backlash of riots, killings, People been maimed, destructions, and everything. In Manchester, Sunderland, Liverpool, and some other strategic areas. In in Belfast, in Belfast, in Belfast, in Belfast, include Belfast so as well. Aside that, there were there were there were there were, were protests 
going everywhere we're protesting different parts of the uk some are peaceful some are violent depends on how they were managed and with this uprising right everywhere it's 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 had led us to see that people are clamoring for a change be it positive or be negative change so those are some of the things we want to look at today and see how this affect us generally as first of all as human beings as humanity first of all yeah then and secondly okay. okay well yeah yeah i i i i'm sorry i want you to finish your thought and at the same time i'm tempted for you not to finish your thoughts That's the reason being that the reason why i'm doing yeah. that is because i've i've actually yeah. itemized how we're going to go through this topic so i i know that people so fast Yes, that's the first thing because uh, what yeah, I'm the people, saying is okay, that nah, nah. the people, the economy, uh -huh. and the state of government. So if it, yes. we, I want us to trash the the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. We'll trick it like that first of all. But what I want to know is how it affects us as human beings first of all, then mm. also as migrants in a foreign land. Those are the those are because basically that's those are the two areas you want to look. How does this? Because first of all, something that is not remotely affect that is not affecting you directly. There must be some remote effect. Definitely. The protest. I was speaking with someone some days ago before the protest happened. We we're talking about the protest, and he was saying they're not serious. Blah blah blah. And all was saying. And I told him one word. I said, directly or indirectly, the hardship being faced today in Nigeria is affecting you because you have family. Of course. You have people there who depend on you. I said, don't think of, of the fact that okay, because sometimes. We have the feeling that we don't know people. I know I've I've talked to a lot of people, and I spoke with someone once who said he doesn't pray for the Nigerian economy to be good. I'm like, why? Wow. It was That's like if the economy gets if the economy gets better, the exchange rates will not be favorable i was like that's that's, that's a very stupid thing to say i i i think you should stop being friend with such a person honestly that's that's my honest <laughs> opinion you should stop being friend with such a person and i would explain why when i have my flaw continue so at the end of the day we know that these things affect us so these are issues we need to talk about because sometimes we feel uh we need to shy away from some things while we're trying to save our head protect ourselves i don't want to talk much i don't but at the end of the day some of these discussions need to come into mainstream discourse we can't just keep silent and let things go so these are some of the things we are going to trash out today and like you've said we're going to start from the people so dimeji let's bring let's 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 take it back to 2000 and 2012 or 13 when jonathan wanted to remove subsidy and people clamored for protest there was protest going on good and fine people were protesting that jonathan had to take the prize back it got so bad he's got a corpse was even taken to his mother's village his mother had to see a corpse with jonathan's name so it was so bad but I looked at that protest because since that time there have been three major protests in Nigeria. That that protest, the NSAS protest, and this present and governor's protest. So it's called Occupy Nigeria, NSAS, and End Bad Governors. Just, 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 just name. Yes. So looking at these three protests, I see a lot of because I see a lot of similarities and differences. And I will hit the, I will hit the point because initially, when they talked about the, the Occupy Nigeria protest, from my perspective, I see that protest as more political driven. <laughs> than you mean being... the answers or Occupy Nigeria? No, Occupy Nigeria. Of course, Occupy Nigeria protest is the energy that the opposition party used to get into power right now. And the facts are there. You're absolutely right. You're hundred percent right. Look, the fact that I even have family members that benefited from this does not deter me from saying the truth, man. 
And you know, yeah. you know, one of my big uncle that I'm saying about that was supposed to be the I, vice I, president I, I, of Nigeria. Yeah, so yeah, but yeah. Um, was, just, just because we are, that protest. yeah, just because we are big dogs and uh, we are we are we are we are we are might come from a very strong family political background in Nigeria doesn't mean we subscribe to leadership and not political antics that is being played right now. That's why big shout out and maximum respect to people like uh, Sanu Silamido. But continue your thoughts because uh, I'm just going to be oh. chipping in some facts as well too. Yeah, yeah, no, you need, it, 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 we need to bounce ideas off each other. So looking at that protest, I don't want to even go into the entire protest because if I go into that now, it's going to be another ball game. I'll just oh, jump that's... the end up and come up to the end bad governor's protest. protest. Do you know the painful thing about this whole protest was the narrative the government was giving was what really I felt I, I it was so appalling to me. I felt really disgusted. At the end of the day, the government was giving a narrative to make it look like this protest had political undertones. I listened to a lot of commentators, a lot of government spokesmen, a lot of government media personalities on channels on Arise. And they were not even, I and I, I told someone once, I said, see, a protest does not arrive from thin air. Something must trigger it. Wait, okay, I beg, please, let me just come in now. I'm, I'm becoming, I'm, I'm becoming, coming, coming. Coming. I'm yeah, becoming, yeah, 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 coming. You see, in my first book, I didn't know that a mighty hand rested upon me to foresee the future. In my first book titled The Gods of My Parents, I yeah. wrote something, I wrote an antecedent uh, in that book that is, a, that is a reaction. So one of those things that was created in that book is the conglomerate of intelli intelli intelligent Africans. Conglomerate of intelligent Africans. It is like a, um, it is an association that is binded by all religion. You have to take the oaths. This is not where you come and say, I'm a Muslim, I can't take the oaths from every dimension. You take the oath too. Because as scary they come from Christian, I, you have to satisfy Musa from North. Take their oaths. And you have to satisfy Dagiri from the traditional. The you get so you take the oaths and your Africanity will be respected. But do you know, though it was a fiction, it was a fiction, I'm coming somewhere. It was the only solution in my book that African people knew for some for some reasons that this is the hope where it will house no Judas. So people started yeah. coming from all walks of life. Um, lawyers, doctors, journalists, people started saying, no, they've burnt this flag enough. They've destroyed this economy enough. We want to stand for our motherland. You understand? So in that, if you read my novel and the reaction, the pure reaction I got for some, from, from, from readers, they emailed me. Many people emailed me and started messaging me that, please, I, I want to join the CIA, the Conglomerate Intelligent Africa. And they talked about Bergo. It was a fix. It's a fiction. It, this is not real. But this was saying, <laughs> and they were not pushing it to me that we can create it. That the way you it's wrote visual, it, it's visual actually, visual. yeah, it's it's actually a solution. What is the reaction people are giving when you sell them that kind of hope? Now, what is going on in Nigeria is what is also obtainable in every society that we are experiencing on West right now. Number one, there is a class warfare yeah. going on, and they are seeing it coming. Exactly. The right, the right wing has benefited a lot for, from capitalism. See, capitalism came to favor the right wing and to make them go extremely far. So I like it oh, when yeah. they say the far right in this angle, but they are using it in a wrong way in, in, in this European society, but they should use it in the right perspective. The far right, indeed, it is the benefit of the capitalism and you know the, the benefit of what should be what you, but what they don't understand is that the system in place and what the law, and I'm going to take it one after the other. So we are saying there's a class warfare and that brings classism. What does classism mean? You are giving birth to, Kewe, this kind of society even tried so much to ensure that every child has a right to education. You will be in trouble as a parent if you do not see that your child is adequately educated because they, they know that that child will become a burden in the society the child will feel inferior and they don't want such you know children they want everybody to have equal opportunities and education is one of those assets health is one of the we don't have that in nigeria in nigeria once you are born to a certain class you are already minus zero minus one in life 
So there is no basic I mean, So this classism, class warfare that is going on in some society is taking them a while. It's taking them longer for them to wake up from the sleep. From the jump, we have woken up from the sleep, from the jump. We, are, we have seen a kind of society that is grossly inequal. There's a yawning gap between the right wing and the left wing. And the mostly affected people are the left wing. So in the in the society that I said that they, they've been put to, I won't say they were they are they were asleep. The system is working because there's a middle class. We believe in the myth of middle class in Africa because there's nothing called middle class in Africa. What does a middle class means? Tell me what has benefit a middle class. A middle class earns their money and spend it completely. It was it is even in their own myth that they've created a kind of wealth system that elevates them. What we call thrift collection what we call some sort of co cooperative loan and everything. It is a system they devise. Tell me one thing that the government has actually made to, for the middle class in order for them to actually be sustainable, to live a comfortable life. So naturally, government is playing a game against humanity in Africa. They are playing a game against their people, national consciousness, patriotism. Can you see? And now, even the middle class, the far right again, they came to the middle class and come and divide even that middle class again and tell you that in this middle class, we want to create a class again here. There's a lower, lower middle class, there's an upper middle class. I'll give you an example. Your mom or my mom, don't, don't use your mom so it doesn't look an insult. My mom, that's a true life story. My mom is a nurse. She retired as a nurse. You and I will agree that although she's a middle class, a middle class is different from someone who works as a... Uh, um, even though they are, they are employed by the government as a cleaner in Nigeria. Why? Why are we having that kind of conversation? Because there is gross inequality again in what is called the, uh, um, what is that, um, minimum wage, gross inequality. Wage, yeah. so, we come to, so we come to a society like this and we see what the government are actually doing. I say, okay, fine. There is no, I don't know how worse your work could be here. There is a minimum wage per hour here. So there's a limit to you as a boss can treat someone who is even a cleaner in your organization firm. That is a master-slave relationship up in Africa. We are, we are juxtaposing to society right now and we are, we, are, we are trying to let people know the reaction they are giving to, their, to what is going on. And their reaction is not people against people. And this is where some people are getting it wrong in the society. You are going against people. You are not going against the real issue. The real issues are not your immigrants, fam. What class is going on? We know that there are class warfare going Dimeji, on. Relax. Yeah, that is a problem in every society. Dimeji, Dimeji. Okay. Relax, relax. Okay. I see, I see, I see you are, you are pushing fire. Because what we are going to do is, we, 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 we are starting from Nigeria. We'll bring it home. We call, this is okay. our home now. So we'll hand home. So you are taking us home quickly. Let's come okay, back. Okay, fine. okay, fine. Okay. Let, 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 so, let, let me stay in Nigeria. Let, let, me, let, me, let me say something. I want to say something. You talked about people not looking at the real issues, rather yeah. pick, pinpointing other problems where there are issues, clashes, riots, yeah. Yeah. protests like this. And that is very correct. That is exactly what is happening in Nigeria. With this whole clash, the major thrust of the issue is hardship. People are clamoring, the price of petrol is up there the price of food is up there the price of transportation is unbearable rent are increasing i told somebody somebody was i was speaking to one of my in-laws some days ago and he was saying he's so angry so pissed he's actually not in nigeria he's in canada but he said he's so pissed with the average market woman in nigeria i did a post that the average market woman in nigeria is a wicked person and, and i told him i said that is a wrong narrative it was like, ah, I see the price of goods, they keep risking. So I, I, gave, I, I decided to give him, I said, let me give you a little analysis. I said, first of all, we listened to an interview where somebody said Nigeria is producing enough crude. We are not producing enough crude. There's so many challenges. So many challenges right now. The price that's, of oil, I was in that, I was in That's even an, that's yes, even an I'm, I'm probably, Let me land. Let me land. The price, when I went to Nigeria last year, I visited Nigeria last year, February. The price of fuel last year, February, there was scarcity in fuel when I was in Nigeria. There was serious fuel scarcity when I visited. But I was still able to buy fuel for 
twenty two hundred and twenty naira per liter. A year down the line, fuel is not some people sell for nine hundred, eight fifty, a thousand naira. It's only in the bigger fuel stations you get for. So I told him, I said, imagine buying for imagine the person who plants crops. You have there's no power, there's no net, there's no electricity, so you have to power your equipment with fuel. Power your generator with fuel, power all your irrigation system, everything with, with fuel. And then you have to buy manual. You go to the company producing manual, there's no electricity. They have to power their machines with fuel for them to produce that manual. And at the end of the day, they are going to add that in their overhead cost. Look, there is no the even day, producing there, there, there's no producing company, even as little as to speak manual or even seedling company in Af in Nigeria. That is how they've destroyed the economy. I'm still coming to economy. You've you've jumped to economy. The people reaction yeah. is what so, I'm still trying to trash. So 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 I I'm, so I said at the end of the day, when all this happened, the ripple effect falls back on the citizen. Definitely, because the person who is who was charging the keke man who charges you fifty naira for a ride when he was buying fuel for two hundred two fifty. You will not expect him to charge you 50 naira for that same ride when he's buying for, for 900. Look, let's have a hard discussion. woman here. will not charge you that amount. Let's, 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 let's have a very difficult conversation here. And this is me also putting myself on the spotlight. We have, see, I, I don't come middle class now. I, I don't come middle class, right? I don't, you see what they've done in the middle class. They've also divided the middle class so that you don't even dream of coming to that far right. So you become very extremely lucky. But now a government, a Nigerian situation, that kind of developing country, someone passionate about leadership in Nigeria that knows that Nigeria is flowing with milk and honey should actually ensure that the leadership in Nigeria, and I'm saying it, leadership structure in Nigeria should be upon volunteerism. You don't collect a fucking dime. Excuse my language. Maximum wage should have been the push of the NLC. But because when they push minimum wage and what the ideology is that they've been long in service, Maybe their salary was in between 250 or 200 at that point, and they pushed the minimum wage to 70. Their own salary has been close to maybe 500. They've won the little battle and not the war. And these are these kind of stupid leaders we put in all parastatas in all elements of affairs that we think they're fighting for our cause. Now, let us also go to the. If let, Let's imagine now, let us imagine that we have been put into the structure of Nigeria. The first way for you to take. How, how, how do you chase hyenas away from carcasses? This is common logic, fam. How do you chase vultures from carcass? Two ways, fam. You take Either the carcass you away. Or you take the carcass away. And these people, the the, the um, um, leadership in Nigeria has already been made lucrative. This is one of the easiest ways to become a billionaire. People exactly. go That's to people go to people go to bank to get loan, not because you want to you want to start a you want to start a company, you want to start producing something. But because you want to, you want to, you want to, you are vying for a position. So you so go there to take Dimeji, millions because and you know Dimeji, you don't want to return it. Dimeji, Dimeji, what you have said is very, very correct. When and the lady, about, because and the lady I that was saying, I worked that, in a bank. Listen, no, I, let me, let me, let me come. I worked in a bank for years, and I see politicians come to strike deals with bank managers, senior executives in banks, to get money to run campaigns. With the promise of when I win, all government allocations will go through your bank. So you see a lot of things happening. So it shows you that people are not even concerned about I want to get into a position to make a change or make the betterment of lives of people, but rather I'm going into government to better my life and my family's life. And that is the no. wrong that is the no, wrong no. narrative. Please, I don't want to see. Okay, we might even do this in series. Maybe this will be one because maybe next week we are going to treat economy. One hour, trust me. I'm coming somewhere about these people. People will react, react. Okay, as you are right like this, you're a gentleman. If I want to see the beast in you, let me dare put you in a place where restrict your freedom, restrict, you are going to react naturally. I'm going to bring out the beast in you. Reaction from people are always pure. But these people also have devised ways in order to divert that reaction from the right 
attack. It's just like, look, you can't kill a bird if you don't aim well. You just shoot. And when you shoot straight bullets, you just, you shoot and miss. You could have a dangerous weapon at hand and not kill what you actually want to kill. And that is what because is happening with people you get right off. Who are these people listening to? Who is actually feeding them? Who is directing them? So you see, they control the media because they are scared. They don't. They know that they, they are for they foreseen revolution coming years ahead now, but they don't want it to be their time. They know it is coming. You can't escape because revolution, you, but they don't want it to be in their own time. So they will do well, everything was, possible to I escape. I was discussing with someone last night. I was discussing with someone last night. Eh? You see this thing that's about narratives and changing directions. It is it is all a po- I see it as a political strategy. Because you know when this can't you when see this stupid, uprises, can't, can't you see the stupid statement our pre- our president made? He, he they are claiming they are claiming that people that are hungry and they are reacting to being hungry. It is political motivated. So I must be told by a politician that I am hungry. That is madness. I'm man. hungry. So you, that see, is madness. you see what I'm saying now? You see what I'm saying right now? You know, you know when this whole whole um clutch started. It started when the whole um, protest started. The Northerners took it to another level. Kano, Kaduna, Jigawa, very vo- volatile areas, destructions. Their leaders dare not. I repeat, we Southeast. Look, look. I'm um, see. Ah, okay. I'm. I'm. Please, just let me complete my thought, please. I, I've said it today. We might just read the people. <laughs> see, the North. The characteristics of Northern society is also different from the characteristics of Southern Southwest society. The Southern part of Nigeria, precisely. See, the Northern society. They are not bought into the absolute capitalism. So their leaders have devised a way in order to still sell pseudo communism for them. I repeat, sell pseudo communism for them. So that is the reason why, because you will meet a northerner during your NYC, and your northern friend will tell you that they still receive stipend from their local government. It is even their senator yeah. that their, their local government that pays their school fees and all. It can never, it has never, I have never, it will never happen in Southwest. I said they start sleeping Southwest. with their girlfriends. Well, even the South distribute South. the resources it, it, and miss their family. Okay, yeah, we got we got it. I think we got a little, we got a, we got a bursaries. I got, I, I know I got paid bursaries, but the funny thing was, the bursaries were How much? paid. How much was it? Or it was, it was 10,000 naira I got paid as bursaries. Bro, now, nah, bro. I'm talking about consistent. I was with a guy at yeah, NYC and cons- for, for, he was receiving, aside from being paid school fees, he was receiving monthly allowance in Nigeria. I told the guy, I said, maybe the guy never tell me again for his life. I told him in his life, he should not tell me he's in Nigeria. We are not in the same Nigeria. Do you know this guy? This guy finished HNDO. This guy finished NYC immediately. He got employed into this um, paramilitary custom. I was even sending my CV to him. Say, bro, after now, help me. Let me tell you. He, he said he took my CV to his leader, and the leader told him that you stupid. What benefit will I benefit from this guy if I help him? Nothing. What political benefit will he benefit that he should go and meet his leader in his own geopolitical zone? Now, bro, I'm telling you now, they've divided the people so much. So the reality in North is different from Southwest. Agitations will, will always be different. The agitation, again, that is coming from North is in two ways. People are reacting in two ways. People are, some people are bought, they are bought into, ah, eh, it is not our people that is in power. They've bought into that sentiment. Why the second sentiment is pure? So we need to also tell the truth as well. Let me ask it a is question. Two Let me ask two a question. Let me yes. ask you a question because that yes. was the point I was coming to when I before you already jumped into it already. When you talked about the agitation in the north, and I think is the narrative of people saying the north are more agitated because I've I've heard someone talk about it yesterday. Like the north is more agitated. We can prove because, it by their leader. We can we can prove it by the experts because they are not it's in power. Problem. Because when they said somebody said, said when Buhari was in power, there was hardship, but they never protested. No, ex-president Buhari said it. Buhari said if he didn't win that election that he won, I will make Nigeria ungovernable. So taking it from their, from their leader, it is something that they could do. For him to be so bold enough, we know from Southwest that there's nothing he can't buy us. So what does it mean that he was going to make Nigeria ungovernable? So their leaders know that it is easier for them 
to buy their people with sentiment. So I, my so, fact, so you, my so words so are. So the point I'm trying to make now is this end bad governors protest. There was a that means that means it it what you have what you are saying now is in a way contradictory to what you said earlier about the politicians trying to say that this was more of politically motivated and hunger. I'm, because I'm, 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 no, I'm talking saying, from every side. I'm talking from every side. From yeah, the side because of because you're the saying people, the northerners are protesting because it's not their person there or so is this, is, 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 are there two there are two school of thoughts in that area now. Two That's sentiments. Now. They have two sentiments. People have two sentiments towards this towards this end governance from the north. From the north, yeah. two sentiment. From the southwest, we have two sentiment. In fact, if not multiple sentiment, but I can tell you two major sentiments. Two major sentiments are some people are saying it is our person now. Give him time. Those I yeah. call them the stupid, the stupid kind of people. And some people are even bought for the fact that they have they they have they have they have they have they have deadened their conscience. They they, are, they they could be bought at any price. Those are our. I will I won't even use our call not me. They can't influence me. Those are the people's influencers. They can be bought at any amount. As a matter of fact, if Abata wake up today and Abata wants to start claiming on his loot back, there are some influencers that he can buy to push that agenda. These people of course. they've 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 condescended themselves to know that they can be bought at any price. These are cheap folks, fam. So these people See, are there know, pushing you, the narrative you know. in in both ways too look it's a complex it's a complex society in southwest in both ways some people they can be bought but they're actually patronizing themselves through supporting people that you see that i have followers if you don't come and patronize me i will always use people against you so it's hard to even know influencers that are genuine like she I, I, I want you to follow me just let me learn and there are some people that have been bought already their conscience, their destiny, their life, their platform has been bought already, and they are the devil's advocate. We are only a few people that are pushing narratives, Pan African that are not about like Reno, okay. Show me, Baba. I don't want to mention name, but I, I can hardly find some people that have not double spoke, spoke from the right mouth, spoke from the left mouth. I know what I am saying. I've done my research, fam. All these stupid, stupid so, celebrities, stupid influencers that we think that they are, they, are, they are not influencing people like me. They are influencing idiots like them. You know, you know, you know these people can be here. bought. I see. You know what I've seen here? I've seen it from two ways. Because when I I, I did, during my, 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 my PhD thesis was centered around uh, uh, influence of celebrities, endorsement, how opinion leader opinion follower those are th th that was just the area of my thesis and what i've seen here i've looked at the south and i've looked at the north i've seen that the two sides are playing the same game but from different angles the north as a as a big community are using the opinion leader opinion follower technique to lead their people they are using it in a way this is the way they are using it and the tool they are using is the tool of illiteracy that's why you saw when jonathan tried to create more amajiri schools in the north it was met with serious stiff resistance opposition because they knew on the long run if the northerners are empowered with knowledge and education the leaders of the north will not wield so much influence which they do right now because the average Northerner, no disrespect to Northerners, we have educated, educated Northerners, but the ratio of educated Northerners and illiterate Northerners is, I'm not doing a research here, it's probably I said they are selling, 20 to 8. You are, you are right. That's why I'm using the right word. They are selling pseudo communism so, for them. You could imagine a governor, so, a governor, a governor doing mass marriage for them, giving them bed, lodging them in hotel, telling them that so you let can me, imagine let it me can finish. never happen in Southwest. And so it's easier for the leader to give them the, um, tailoring to, to, to give them tailoring machines and everything to say that go and set up. We in the southwest we are exposed. You can't give me tailoring machine yes. and tell me I want to know how much you earn as my own leader. And you're telling so, me to let, let me finish. So so that is what the northerners are using as a tool to really manipulate and operate. But for the southerners, what now pertains to the south? Because the people have seen that I've done studies. I did I my one of my I did a paper on uh, celebrity influence on political 
yeah, I, I saw that. Congratulations. Omo, you are not Dr. K. We are not supposed to be calling you K. Thank, Dr. K. Thank you very much. <laughs> I did that. I noticed what the South, South are using. The South know that people in the South are more woke, more exposed to Western communication and everything. So they've seen that, okay, the best way to get into these people are by using famous people they associate with. That's why, why? you see Mam, that, that's right now they are why? driving. Why? Why? I want to ask you because why. Because at the end of the day, the government wants to drive home a certain ideology. And what they know the, the only way they can drive no, no, no. this Mam, 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 I, I want to ask you, why is it that leaders in South, in South North fear their own people, even though you are still saying they are uneducated, and leaders in Southwest have no regard and fear don't, don't even fear their own people they lead yes, their leaders over. I, yes, I want you to let me tell you, let me okay, let me tell you something. The, the northerners are they are they are very they are daredevil people, they are ferocious people. The northerners Why? have a they have a system where someone can rise up tomorrow and become a voice, and the people will listen to that person and they can move against any government in the north, but in the south. We have people who are really very two-faced people who cannot say, okay, this is what I've said. For example, let me give you a very classic example. Look at the case of Nadikano. If Nadikano was a Northerner, it would have been a different story entirely. <laughs> well, should I but that's, a con that's a conversation where we are, we are trading into into very deep waters let's let's leave that conversation yeah. on the side no 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 we've touched there fam i'm not i'm see i'm not scared we've touched <laughs> there and i'm going to go there see listen the characteristics of citizens in north we in south we've bought one illusion and that illusion we bought is that you and i we think we are the majority of nigerians even in the southwest we are not the majority but we cannot reconcile to tell ourselves that fact and I will explain why. Our mothers, our fathers, they knew what family planning is. Their, their age made contemporaries, even at that age, in the village, they were still having 12 children. Till now, our yeah, age mates right now, they're that, still, that still marrying three wives, having children. So how can we, how can we be the majority? But what is going on in Southwest? And the, and the that has made Nigeria us is, Nigeria is a game of, Nigeria is a game of numbers. Nigeria is yeah, a game yeah, of numbers. I, I'm going somewhere. There's there's a problem in Southwest that is not in North. That's what I'm telling you. With that pseudo communal like communism that is going on in North, it is advantageous and it is disadvantageous. You've we've highlighted the disadvantage. Now I want to highlight the advantage against Southwest. There's a mental oppression game going on in Southwest that we've bought, bought into, and one of those things that we've used to commit conscious character suicide is that we believe luxury all these things luxurious we must also attain it yeah we so we we spread even in our family in our nuclear family we spread that ideology that this is what success looks like this is what you can accrochate to sources now how do you characterize a society where i met that guy and it's a normal lifestyle for them for a, a their leader you know their leaders they are united at the top they meet at abuja but now let's think like their leaders now. One one is saying that ah, this money will I collect. They no bomb will make I spend everything. No. I have to disburse to my local government. One is saying lie, lie. Oh yeah, go and go and lodge hotel for my girlfriends in Dubai. I'm giving nothing ah. to my constituency. Because yeah. we yeah, you, you don't see, because we in Southwest, we are bought into one mental oppression game, and we believe we and we, we believe and we preach that message. That message of self, self, self aggravation that we have to attain luxury that's the peak of achievement so anything societal communal is dead is destroyed in southwest but in north Imagine. It, it exists it's and that's why let's bring anything it that you are going to take away from north if you are going to take that away trust me you are not going to govern so it's easier for that it's easier for the leaders not to just have followers but they have followers indeed you see in southwest a lot of gimmicks is going and you know there is fear fear as a tool in southwest let us be honest. We got to a certain state before we knew that. Oh, my mama, I did go vote. Not even if you tell me. What has happened all these years? What has been? What has they been feeding us about election? I not go about, vote. Dangerous. About uh, about even common protest for our right on campus. 
more goals. They are stay your house. Even when we're but, protesting in school, they make you feel like you go fail. I say Southwest. I say Southwest. Our our picking picking go strike for university go day six months. Our mama go see go they go work for the same government. We put your child do. We put your child go home. Quickly, quickly, let me, let me tell you what. Not wait, tell me. Not when I was, it, tell me. When I was, in, let me tell you. When I was in school, I was, I, I graduated <laughs> from UDB twenty. It was two thousand and nine, so we were having issues on campus, light, water. It was becoming problematic. So in the morning, it was just the morning. A few of us just woke up, and people were just there. Was this annoyance of enough is enough? It was in the boys' hostel. It started. A few guys come out and they were agitating. And before we know, the whole school was moving. We went to the main gate because I was in a different campus. We locked the gates off. Lecturers were outside, wanting to come to lecture. That's we a said, pure protest. No lectures today. Reactional protest. Everybody, pure. everybody should be outside until we speak to the VC. So we're there. I was. I, I was in the forefront of this protest. I was on the fence and somebody said something to me. He said, Kewe, na final year you do, you won't graduate to not go front to come back. We don't see none of the push us. Come back. We did not see your face. <laughs> so you see that fact that there is that fear of if I protest, I feel not graduate. That equates oh. to ah, that fear. I know a lot of a lot of fellow finance students like me who were in their hostels. They didn't come out. They're how like, can you I even don't... convince? Wait, how can you convince youths now that are giving into frivolities like Yahoo and has gotten his GL cake pack in his compound? A girl has just come from campus in bikini cooking in his kitchen. He has got um his drink, gin, and he has calculated that he's going to have and, a nice night. How can you convince fast. that kind of uh, him and his girlfriend where he never has to, how can you convince both of them to come enter protest with you? Southwest. We are plagued with a lot of illusion. We've bought a lot of illusion. And comfort is one of those things that we are trying, we are using to throw our rights out of the window, windows like this. And we consider people like Shenkuti, very dark man, like their own too much. In fact, we would rather watch them as for entertainment rather than them trigger us into action. Watch them so no, no. And, and when this happens, you, no, no. you see comments like they are not too much. Uh -huh, don't touch them. You see them. So Dimitri, so, let's bring let's bring it to let's bring it home okay. let's bring it home we don't have time let's bring it home so the people in the next, few next week will be next week, next week so, will be uh, so in the next few minutes let's come back to what's been happening with immigrants in the uk of late because what? i was listening to I, I want us to talk about let's look at let's look at the personality of tommy robinson because I, i've i've listened to a couple of commentaries as regards why now because i'm like I was, i've been asking questions like there's a it's stabbing new, new new government and it was no, just there, like a, there's a stabbing in there's a stabbing in southport because somebody was saying the reason for this uprising was the stabbing in southport so i'm trying to understand the stabbing in southport was carried out by a white male a white male did that so where is the narrative now coming from that the immigrants are making the uk unsafe <laughs> for the british citizens my brother i needed to say something well, before i, before I uh, we we need we we, uh, we we need to be realistic right now and this is where i'm going to tread carefully not that because i'm speaking out of fear but i'm speaking based on facts you see, we have many characteristics of people in the society. We have some people who pitch their ideology with the fact that people drive economy. And in this economy, you ask yourself, these immigrants, uh, the first argument is that they are taking their jobs. I'll take it from there. Unsafe, that is just a business kind of conversation. But I'm coming from, uh, because I'll, I'll put that on save to Islamophobia, which I'm coming from. I'm still coming to. But let's take about, let's first take it from, um, they are taking their jobs. The, the funny guy they interviewed the other time that saying I can't get a job for the past three years and so, he said, okay, why can't you get it? He said he had a criminal record. I said, so you did you can't pitch your problem with the fact that it's, a, it's your criminal record that has been responsible for you not getting a job, but the immigrant. He said, it's the immigrants. 
you see it's easier for people for some irresponsible people to blame others for their own failures um people need to people drive buying into that narrative yeah so and you see and you can't have a system working already and the system pauses for you i'll take that again a system running already cannot pause for anybody it has to keep moving it doesn't wait so when some the 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 reduction in numbers of people that the and and those people that can project the economic expert group that can project that if we don't get people to make this thing wrong there will be an absolute crumble in the whole civilization we've built so how else do you build it so have we forgotten because um my people will say that are we forgetting so quickly that these same immigrants were the one who saved people during the uh, 2020 um covid covid 19 stroke 2020 when there was lockdown, so lockdown, and these are the people that are putting and, their lives behind. Do you know the funny thing about? Do you know the have they forgotten? Have we all forgotten again? Have we all? Have, are we quick to forget that the jobs that you are complaining are service job? Not. I, I'm. I'm yet to see. I'm yet to see those top tiers job that really, really matters into the running of economy and the nation that you are complaining that it is infiltrated already by immigrants. But when you talk about service job, so how does someone who washes plate, who works as and health care assistant who is a professional nurse who takes care of your people and all and there's a guideline there's no complaint in that industry that the, the immigrants are treating your people badly these people have been professional doing their work very well how does that correlate with the fact that they've been stifling your opportunities and i think there is an anger coming from somewhere that just like that guy that deflected the fact that he was the problem his own record was the problem that his own his, his, his own fact that he had a criminal record was a problem, but it was easy for him to take everything and what blame it on the immigrants. So let's talk about being unsafe. How unsafe has the UK been? Have you have you gone to Congo? Have you been to the northern part of Nigeria? Because we can have we can define what um, 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 security mm-hmm. issues are for you. Have you been to South Sudan? Have you been to so when when you use these kind of words, they are just exaggerated words in order to pamper some set of people who feel entitled. To. What do you mean by unsafe? When last have you heard that some people are scared to walk at night in the street of UK? UK is one of the safest places. I will repeat it. So immigrants are not responsible for it. When people have clashes, let us treat the issues and not. Act. You can't generalize things. It it makes people an educated fool, educated idiots. You can't generalize that immigrants are making the nations. Do you, how, have you even asked immigrants? Do they feel safe and 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 missed um and the locals? So these are these are business conversations. What what I can pitch them to that you makes see, sense to me is you, you see where the problem is coming from. You see where the problem is coming from. I, I saw it like it is. It's just people trying to air out. I think I think the the, the basis of this whole fire issue. It is class warfare. Well There's down, a class warfare. It boils down to warfare. classism, and it boils down to the. It's been. I feel there's a political tune to it to cause unrest with the government. And to add topping on it, and, and to add topping on it, and this is me. This is my personal opinion. It is a shame and disgrace when the education that has been invested in people to make them aware of the world is seen when people display some certain kind of characters, and they are displaying the fact that they don't know their history. I'll be intellectual enough to keep it as a comma there, then say a few words and put it as a full stop. Because there is a responsibility that comes from someone who knows their history. And when you say your history, when you say your history, isn't it a surprise for many immigrants that people, I mean, the British people are complaining about occupation, occupying their lands. Isn't it amazing or surprising as okay. the case may be? Go back so I'm time. just going to put a full stop. I'm not going to put four stop in there, but you have to know your history very well for you to come out and, you know, start pointing accusing fingers. That aside, now let us talk about Islamophobia. I think that is where the unrest is. Islamophobia is not just a problem here. It is a global problem right now. So if yeah. some things are not instituted, constituted in your laws, I don't think we should bring civil issues to make them capital issues. As if it has been stipulated That's in right. the laws. 
So we can't we can't seg- we can't just put hatred on some sect of people, stigmatize them, and say that oh, collectively this is how they should be perceived. Things don't happen that way. We didn't perceive British people, every British people, as racist. Even till now, with everything that is happening, even we are not cut- suffer from racism. Even, even even obviously, obviously before you, as you can see on rest, how everything is playing out, we still don't categorize, categorize every British people. Every British person racist. has been racist. Why why will every immigrant be, be categorized as a potential danger and risk? That's that that's just an uneducated kind and of if, You know the funny you know? thing. Somebody made a post. Somebody made a post some days ago. If there was, I think it was the four by four by hundred meter or four by four hundred meter mixed relay where team gb won i think silver or bronze they won and everybody in the photo even the british team the american team all blacks and somebody made a post about this immigrant at this point i don't think this was seen as risk it was it was a sarcastic comment yeah because looking at all set looking at I'm try, you are trying to say all immigrants are, are bad. There's a war against black people. But 80% or 60% of the athletes that were, went to Paris for the Olympics for Team GB were all blacks. And to be honest with you, forget the fact that a lot of them have British citizens now. Every black person is traced back to Africa. Of course, they yeah, know that. We know that. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. So why? So let me is, just drive my point. There, why is there so? We don't have time. But God's one is why is there so much force with the fact that it may, because I feel what I feel here is government. The truth is, government had a hand to play in these false narratives. In these narratives, with policies where they came because I I, I saw something coming like this when they started saying. Uh, the surge of immigrants is too much. We are going to put policies to surge immigrants. So that I started playing in the minds of people. Oh, these people are coming in. Uh, they are taking our jobs. The coming of immigrants falling in line with uh, the economic hardship in the UK. They are not looking at it from the perspective of mm. it might be the, it might be the war in Ukraine. It might be Brexit that is co- causing all this economic hardship. They are just mm. putting it that okay, this is falling in line with immigrants. Sort of immigrants yeah. in the UK. Well, let me drive my home point. Let me drive. I, I love I love you've pitched tent with governments, I'll pitch tent with media. Uh let me drive my point home. I think media now we could we we should do better. I'm using we because we in the business of media, we are considered you no know, colleagues. We should do better. We can see how fast fake news can trigger a lot right now. Because right now I can see BBC now going back to debunk the initial the initial um, um you know viral message that actually got everybody this you know um heated that got things tension so high media we could do better we have that thing that time bomb right now at hand well we think the military people are the one who has the um explosive attack i don't think so in this 21st century right now this recent era where the media we are the one who have the time bomb have you, not heard, so that, uh, have you not heard the statement the, the pen is mightier than the sword definitely definitely yeah. the mic now is now <laughs> the mic so is honestly, mightier than the machine gun <laughs> i'm telling you it's mightier than the bomb because now people can just come in and just change people's narrative what you are that propaganda you want to push can actually affect millions of lives look at the look at the properties being born not just just think about the mindsets the mindset you could be able to you affect and change that could actually in, instigate such hatred nationwide I'm, te- I'm, te- I'm so tempted i'm so tempted to talk about another issue as regards this on the aspect of the the, the clash in south africa between having a new a former representative and a new miss south africa oh, let's make that but next week it's if, two minutes <laughs> if we go into that now there's we don't have time oh, for that because i've seen that man, that is man, that man. that plays into the hands of all these issues so but um we've, we've spent so much time we've had a really very intensive discussion um we're coming next week for the part two so just get ready yeah. for for another get your get 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 ready to be schooled in history that's all i can say a big shout yeah, out to you. uh 
to the major. Big shout out to the major. I know many of you might be wondering why Williams has not been around for for some. He's, he's, he's been on available absent for, but he's going to be yeah. back with us very soon. Uh, big shout out to producers Baron. Big shout out to um, George. Big shout out to there's another everybody. guy. Everybody. Big, there's another big, guy. Big shout out. To, big Steve, shout out to Samson. 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 Yes. Yeah. Big shout out to everybody who's making 3,000 miles fly, make, making 3,000 miles go on the airways. I want to say you guys are the real MVP. And yeah. until we see you guys next week for another wonderful episode of 3,000 miles, stay blessed and have stay a blessed. good week ahead. Yeah. yeah. See Peace out.